All right, so um, here's a quick chemistry re chemistry review for environmental science uh, because we were asking about fires. So um, we covered this in class. I just thought I'd, I'd throw the notes up there again on online. Here we go. So let's remember from biology that um, cellulose is what, you know, what trees are made out of. Um, and cellulose altogether is just a bunch of glucose pieces that are um, stuck together. So glucose would be the monomer, the one piece, and cellulose is a type of polymer made out of many. Now, fun fact, the only difference between um, cellulose and starch, like a potato, um, is the, the, the placement of the connection between the glucose monomers. And one makes a potato and the other makes a tree, and we can't digest trees. Anyway, um, when we light cellulose on fire, we burn a tree, or if trees are burning, because California is burning right now, um, it's so much like the chemical equation for respiration. So let's review the chemical equation for respiration. Uh, we've got some glucose here, and we know that fires need oxygen and heat, so we know those to be our reactants. What are our products? Um, well, you might say, I know that when you burn something, you get a little water out of it, and you get a little carbon dioxide out of it, and you get even more heat out of it. But is this a balanced chemical equation? Now, since we balanced this in class, I'm just going to move ahead a little faster. We need six pieces, six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. In those six molecules of water, there's going to be 12 hydrogens. Just distribute, right? And six O's. And then we've also got six carbons and another 12 oxygens. On the other side over here, we've got six carbons, 12 O's. That's cool, but we only have eight so far oxygen atoms, so we need to balance that out. You put a six in front of the O2, and now we've got a balanced equation. And this is a beautiful thing because we're observing some of our vocabulary words in action. We've got the law of conservation of mass shown. No atom is being created. No atom is being destroyed. They're just moving. And even the energy is not being created or destroyed. The energy was up in the bonds of the cellulose, the glucose, right? All those chemical bonds. My hexagon here is the glucose. And there's carbons here, 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 here. And um, the chemical bond energy is holding a bunch of energy, but that gets released and turned into heat, which we sometimes enjoy as fire at campsites and sometimes run from if it's burning up our forests. So how can we model that reaction over time? All right, we know that we know that chemical reactions achieve um, a stable energy level at the end of the reaction. So how can we model that energy over time? What will the curve look like? All right. Well, we have to realize that this is uh, respiration is going to release energy. So we should know that the final energy will be lower than the beginning energy. Here, I can zoom down a little bit better. Here's what it does look like. We have a starting amount of energy present in the glucose, present in the cellulose. We've got to heat it up to burn it, and so that's our activation energy for this chemical reaction. The fire burns, it releases a lot of heat, releases a lot of energy. And then the products of CO2 and H2O, they have some energy in the chemical bonds, but not nearly um, the amount that was present in the cellulose. So that's how we could model. And this is important because we're going to start studying ecosystems and, and remember how everything is connected. So where is the matter? Where is the energy flowing within our Earth systems? So I want to make a quick model for you about Earth systems. I have a green Earth. I have two green Earths, lucky me. And um, we can generally think of sunlight energy entering the Earth through the atmosphere. And yes, some of it bounces off as heat. And when half of the Earth is not facing the sun, more of it bounces off as heat. Um, not all. Some of it just bounces off the atmosphere, but a lot of that energy makes it in to the planet. It's captured by the plants. 
and the plants can make glucose. And so that input of energy is driving a cycle of matter in our planet. Matter doesn't really escape. Driving a cycle of matter. Matter doesn't really escape our planet. Um, and it moves through the ecospheres um, because of the because of the input of energy. Um, yes, matter does leave our planet a little bit if we ro launch a rocket ship into space and the occasional hydrogen or helium atoms that are way up in the atmosphere, way up high, they are slowly leaving our atmosphere, but those are really negligible amounts. So for um, our purposes, let's just stick with the assumption that by and large, matter doesn't leave the Earth. Think of the Earth as a giant prison. Um, we can't leave. Anyway, quick chemistry review using some of what we learned in Module 4, bringing back some stuff from chemistry class. And with this understanding, let's get into ecosystems. Let's be awesome, read fearlessly, and uh, press ahead. All right, class, I'll see you in time. Bye-bye.